there's been a lot of different diets over the years. I mean, all of them seem to work for a short period of time. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten so popular. So what was the secret behind all these different diets? Why did they all work for a short period of time until they stopped working? We're going to talk about that coming right up. When you look at the number of diets through the years, there's, it's gone through several trends. And some of them have been completely opposite of one another. Yet, for some reason, they seem to have worked. There are, for example, low-fat diets. And there are high-fat diets. There are low-carb diets. And there are high-carb diets. There's high-protein diets. And there's low-protein diets, such as many vegetarian diets are lower in protein. So we also have things like cabbage soup diets and shake diets and cookie diets and all sorts of other things. And yet, strangely enough, they all seem to work. But after a short while, they seem to stop working. And so does it really matter what type of food you're eating, the diet that you're eating? How can two diets that are so different still have the same effect? And the answer is monotony. Let me explain. When we eat diets, we are restricting certain foods. That's what it means. Out of all the foods that we can eat, we decide that we're not going to eat some of them, whether it's low fat or high fat. That's what it means. When you do that, what you're doing is you're creating less variety for yourself and therefore the foods become more monotonous. Think about the 1970s, the diet that I grew up with and really all the kids in school. We followed, for lunch anyway, the sandwich diet. That is, every single day for lunch, we had two slabs of white bread with some kind of processed meat in the middle a juice box, and maybe a cookie or a wagon wheel or something like that for dessert. And it was all brought in a brown bag and later you'd bring it in a lunch box, for example. But it was the same every single day, Monday to Friday for virtually the whole year for 10 or 15 years in a row. And what this does is it makes you not really want to eat. The reason that we eat foods, there's two reasons. One is because we're hungry, and two is because it tastes good. So if you're eating the same food, even if it's a very good food, eventually you're just going to get tired of it, and therefore you're going to take away one of the biggest reasons that we eat, which is the pleasure of eating. So if I'm eating that bologna sandwich day in, day out, I might have started liking bologna sandwiches at first, but then after a while, uh, I, it's just food. The minute that I stop uh, the hunger, I'm going to stop eating that bologna sandwich because there's no pleasure in it left. The hunger pangs are gone and that's it. It's done. If we look at that diet today, you'd say, wow, you've got processed foods, you've got white bread, you've got processed meats, you've got sugary drinks, and another processed dessert on the side. Extremely unhealthy by today's diet, yet in the 1970s, there was very, very little obesity compared to today. So when you think about the diets, these are what restricting certain types of foods do. So when we had the low-fat diet of the 1970s and 80s, people would lose weight because all of a sudden these higher-fat foods were restricted to them so that they didn't like the foods that they ate so much so that as soon as they're um, satiated, they would stop eating. And it goes for things like cabbage soup diets and cookie diets, for example. If you eat a cookie, it's great at first. If you eat a cookie day in, day out, for all, you know, year after year, pretty soon it's just food. It's no longer good for you. So I can make up any diet. I can make up a diet that consists of one or only a few foods, and it really doesn't matter even what types of foods they are, it's still gonna be an effective diet. But what's the downfall? Why do all these diets fail after a while? Well, it's for the same reason they worked. 
they take away the pleasure of eating. And therefore, after a certain period of time, people think, well, I don't really want to restrict myself so much. I want to eat bread or I want to eat fatty foods or I want to eat high carb or low carb or high fat or low fat or high protein or low protein. So then they just abandon the diet and as soon as you do that, then the weight starts to come back. When we look at the obesity epidemic today, from that standpoint, we can then say what's different about today compared to say 50 years ago in the 1970s when we didn't have so much obesity. A lot of people say, well, it's willpower, but I don't think it's a willpower because this has affected all of North America and now pretty well all over the world. So we can put it down to three factors which are related to the monotony. One is the explosion of worldwide cuisine. When you look at the 1970s, cuisine was still fairly regional. So people in the United States would eat a certain thing and different parts of the United States would eat different things. The people in the Europe would eat different things. People in Asia would eat different things, but they didn't eat each other's food. It just wasn't that popular at that time. So the variety of foods was much lower. When we talk about the 1970s, people were talking about meat and potatoes. There was no sushi restaurants. There was no uh, sushi in the mall. There was burgers. That was what you found in North America. But now you look at the modern day mall and there's foods from all over the world, the variety has just exploded. There's Japanese food, there's Asian food, there's Indian food, there's food from all corners of the world, and it's all delicious. But because it's all so new and uh, provides variety, the pleasure that you get from eating these foods is always there because it's always something different. Uh, you look at the supermarket too, you have food from all over. You have pink pineapples and you have long ends and you have rambutans, fruits that you never used to see in the supermarket. You have fresh fish from flown in daily at my local supermarket. So there is so much more things that you can eat today than before. And what that's translated to is that people are going to eat more because they're eating for the pleasure of eating as opposed to just making sure that they're no longer hungry. The second thing that has changed today compared to the 1970s is the convenience and the cost. If it's not convenient to eat a food, you're not going to eat it. If, for example, you want a donut, well, it's delicious. But if you had to go get the flour out and let it proof and then make it and fry it and then put the sugary dressing on top, well, you probably wouldn't eat it because it would take you three or four hours to make it. And it's just not that worth it. However, if you're simply at the donut store because you walked right past it, well, that's a totally different proposition. You might just eat that donut. So the point is that foods are much more convenient than they used to be. We see this proliferation of fast foods, of convenient foods, and the cost has come way down compared to what it used to cost to get these exact same foods. And again, because it's pleasurable to eat them, because it's not going to cost you a lot of money, well, you're going to naturally eat them. And the third factor is that we're eating all the time. And this partially goes back to number two. If it's convenient and cheap, well, it's a lot easier to eat all the time. But you look at the number of times people eat, it's much more than before. Before it was three meals a day, no snacks. Now, these days, most people are eating five, six times a day, and they're eating really from the moment they get up to the moment they go to bed. And it's important because when you're eating all the time, you're not just eating because you're hungry. You're eating for pleasure and when you look at those two reasons you didn't really need to take that snack but it was convenient it was cheap and it was delicious so then you had that snack and that's going to make you eat more so these three factors the explosion of variety the convenience and cost and eating all the time have really conspired to lead to this obesity epidemic so what's the solution 
Well, you got to realize that it's not about exercise, it's not about willpower. The obesity epidemic is not an epidemic of low willpower. It's these other factors. We're not going to be able to stop the variety of foods and the, if it's convenient and cost effective, uh, we're not gonna be able to change that either. So what's the factor that's most in our control? It's the eating all the time. That's where fasting really shines by imposing constraints on the times that you're eating. If it is no longer socially acceptable or you're not expecting to eat in the middle of the day, well, you're not going to. And therefore, you're just going to carry on. And by doing that, you're going to allow your body the time that it takes to work off the foods that you ate and therefore maintain a steady weight over time. So, when you're thinking about the way that we developed obesity, it really gives you insights into how you're going to change your schedule so that you can lose that weight. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something and if you did, maybe share it with a friend. They might learn something too. They might learn something useful. And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button uh, down there so that other people can find this video, I'd really appreciate that. See you next week.